J. Paul Getty had 100 women by the age of 61. J. Paul Getty was the wealthiest American of his time. He famously installed a payphone in his mansion. He cold-heartedly handled his grandson's kidnapping. But not everyone knows about Getty's obsession with women. Getty married and divorced five times, but he preferred casual relationships. Getty was not very discerning. He enjoyed women of different ages and statuses. Getty kept meticulous records of his conquests. He wrote them down in a small black address book. By age 61, Getty had a list of 100 lovers. He boasted of having five different women in one day. He casually offered his mistresses to his guests. Getty took a lot of vitamins and medication. He stayed active well into his 80s. Getty allegedly made his women sign a waiver. If they got pregnant, he wouldn't be financially responsible. Getty hired pretty women for his professional needs. He had three young secretaries at his Sutton Place estate. One of them accompanied him to weddings and dances. Getty hired Penelope Kitson as an interior decorator. She occasionally christened Getty's oil tankers. He housed her in a cottage at Sutton Place. Kitson was intelligent and humorous. She was an odd contrast to the cheerless Getty. Kitson's ex-husband, Patrick DeLazlo, said, he loved and admired her because she was the only woman who would stand up to him. He wanted to marry her, but she told him she was not prepared to be trampled on, like this other wives. Getty was famously distant with his sons, but he hosted a debutante ball for Kitson's daughter. 700 people were invited. In 1962, three other women joined Kitson at Sutton Place. Mary Dessier was a French art expert. Lady Ursula de Beau was an English socialite. Rosabella Birch was a Nicaraguan widow. Birch enjoyed watching TV shows with Getty. She made Tessier and Debo jealous. Each claimed to be Getty's true love. Kitson didn't care about their rivalry. About the women, she said. One was a drunk, one was totally unbalanced, and the other was a trollop. Getty loved watching his girlfriends fight over him. He would pointedly ignore them all evening. Then he would select one of them for the night. In his final days, only Kitson had access to him. She read him his favorite G.A. Handy stories. Giddy's favorite pastime was rewriting his will. When he died in 1976, he was worth $1.2 billion. He named 12 women in his will. Kitson received the largest inheritance. She got 5,000 Doyle shares, valued at $826,500. She was also awarded $1,167 a month for life. Tessier inherited 2,500 shares, valued at $413,125. She received $750 a month for life. Ladies de Beau and Birch got small lump sums. Louise Lynch was Getty's fifth and final wife. She was the only spouse included in the will. She received $55,000 a year for life. Getty's descendants had to fight for the family's trust. Getty kept his women at a controlled distance. He once said to the press, I've tried to avoid being hurt. It doesn't do you any good letting a woman get to you that badly.